Weekly stock market update getting straight into this. Uh, what have we got on a price earnings ratio? Well, actually, we've uh, got energy and insurance again looking cheap. They're the ones in green. A reminder as I go through all of these, I will be looking at a variety of factors for analyzing these companies valuation, their growth, their revenue uh, generation. I'll be scoring those cash return on capital invested momentum because that is correlated to future price, the average returns they generate and the risk or volatility of missing that outperformance of the market, plus a whole bunch of other things, not just their price charts. Now, what can you see here? This is how the week has gone. And as you can see, tech got a bit of a battering. Consumer discretionary coming back a bit. Healthcare, another good week. Energy, which is undervalued, as I said, coming back. Thanks to, if I can put it that way, troubles in the Middle East uh, and therefore worries about the oil price going through the roof. And that's helped energy companies take a bit of a spike because when oil prices are higher, guess what? Just like with background inflation, those oil companies can make bigger profits because it all gets washed under. Oh, sorry, Gov, it's just the it's inflation, but it's not. It's profit margins which are going up as well. What about price earnings growth ratio? Berkshire I've already done on my private Telegram channel. Uh, and I think on the public one, why on a special situation it doesn't work out for me, even though it's one of the cheapest companies. I should probably look at ExxonMobil uh, as well and see if that's a special situation, given how cheap it is. Uh, so I will do that, making a note of that afterwards. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, go have a look at arpishpatel.com forward slash links and you'll see my Telegram channel there. How are we doing for performance? Well, we've taken a hit this past week because it was up 38%. We're now up only 35%. We did peak at 44 So those who got in early this year on my Great Investments Program and were NASDAQ heavy, have done 70 to 100% returns. Um, since July, it's not a problem because even if you got in there, remember we're only looking to pick 15 to 40 stocks which meet our criteria. So even if the broader market falls, it just means there's fewer stocks meeting our criteria, but as long as there's 15 to 40, we're okay. Speaking of okay, how's the S&P 500? Well, as I said, it's in this downward channel and that downward channel uh, has meant as I said it may well do has meant that the price have fallen back again uh, and if we look at the stochastic and the 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 MACD moving average convergence divergence uh, again you can see it's sort of skidding along now remember I don't just look at charts but it does give you some indication of what I do hold to be more important now is it going to do this over here? And if it is, is that the same? Then you may well say we're about to get a sharp fall down from here and we'll break below this bottom trend line. If we break, break below that support, that's bearish. If we break above it, it's bullish. Anything in between, indeterminate, and we just wait. Got it? Very simple to understand. The FTSE, well, it's weakening off again. I guess some worries on... The Middle East. Having said that, the FTSE 100 is oil company rich and those earnings should be getting bolstered by problems in the Middle East. Apple looks very similar, doesn't it, to the S&P 500, as you'd expect. So we're just going to wait. We'll just wait. Uh, and my Apple strategy is that unless we get a discernible fall below that support, then we don't do anything. We just wait because we don't trade our investments. So we're just holding it and we wait because these are investments. Okay. Uh, return potential, say the analysts, is if it goes from there to there, that's what we get. Uh, and Alphabet is also an Apple strategy for me. In other words, we're just waiting. Am I buying more right now? Well, if I didn't hold any and you put a gun to my head, I would. If I didn't hold any and you didn't put a gun to my head, but you put a, I don't know, a baseball bat to my head, then I would probably dollar cost average. And if you didn't put anything to my head, I'd wait if I didn't hold anything. Would I sell? No, I'm not selling at the moment. So like I said, the Apple strategy on the hold it, on the whole is if you already hold some, continue holding it. Okay, and that uh, Apple strategy applies to Alphabet. Uh, I'm just going to use it as shorthand during this. Uh, the Apple strategy applies to Microsoft for the same reasons it applied to Apple. Okay, 
Uh, so there we go. Amazon, same reasons, applies again. And that analysis I've done in the weekly updates, again, have a look on YouTube and my Telegram channel, or TikTok for that matter, for these. Now, this is where the analysts think 33% to the upside over there. What about Disney? Well, you know, that's what you're all after. You're all after that doubling your money. And it has come off that base, but I'm the kind of person who waits for a more discernible rise up, even if all these banks, JP Morgan included, think it's a buy. And even if I expect November to be generally a positive month for the company. NVIDIA's on that base and it's a triple top, presumably, which means that distance below there is the target price if that gets broken. So we could expect something as low as 421 to what, 352 approximately, if that drops off. So just be warned. And you might say, well, if it drops 10%, I'll sell 50% of the company, depending on how risk averse you are. The amount you sell will depend on the size of the drop and on your risk appetite, okay? So risk appetite equals how much you sell, which depends on how much it drops. So you might say, I'll sell 100% if it drops 10% because you're very risk averse. Or you might say, I will sell 0% even if it drops 90% because I'm very risk loving, okay? So that's where we are with NVIDIA. Tesla, Apple strategy still, even though I'm well aware, I'm looking at that and it's fallen below there. Now, if you're risk averse, you may well say, I don't want to do Apple. I'm getting out of it. I'm going to do the NVIDIA strategy, which is drops 10%. I'll get rid of, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 20%. So possibly NVIDIA strategy with this, okay? Possibly NVIDIA strategy with this. All right, does that sound fair? And Meta, Apple strategy, okay, for simple reasons. ServiceNow, which I continue liking. Uh, and again, it's got the same problems as the others. The weekly is going lower. It's going sideways. But on the fundamentals, which I've already discussed with you, they seem fairly okay. All these banks agree. Lots of upside. October, November over there. But still, so Apple strategy. All right, with that one. Cisco, again, Apple strategy with this, as opposed to the NVIDIA strategy. Now, for the more, far more detailed version of this, covering a lot more stocks, You'd need to go to the private channel on Telegram. But for that, you'd have to be a member of the Great Investments Program. If you want to know more about that, have a look at alpishpatel.com forward slash links. Do like and follow this. Leave any comments you wish as well. Thank you very much. Doobie doobie doo. This is the bit where it closes.